Welcome to our discussion of how to observe Shabbos. We have a wonderful opportunity during this COVID crisis, this pandemic, this terrible scourge that's come across the world. It also provides an opportunity. And that is, we're stuck in our houses anyway. Let's see how we can observe Shabbos. We can talk about enhancing our Shabbos. Some people uh, starting from scratch, some people are very advanced. Hopefully, we can share something that's meaningful for everyone. Number one, we need to prepare our meals in advance. So whatever we're going to be eating that needs to be cooked, we have to prepare to think Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, think what do we want to prepare for the two main meals, Friday night and Shabbos afternoon. Then we want to know what lights are we going to keep on for this holiday. Are we going to keep on the lights in the kitchen, dining room, den, in the bedroom? We want to have some sort of reading light. We want to keep it dark. We want to have light in the bathroom. Which, which bathrooms one will have lights on? These are important questions so we can know the lights are on. Maybe the front porch light on. So the lights are set. You don't have to deal with them the rest of Shabbos. Then, strange things we need to know about toilet paper. Of course, today, it's kind of a shortage of toilet paper anyway. So a lot of people are using tissues. So tissues are much better. Don't overstuff the toilet. But use the tissues or cut some toilet paper before Shabbos so that it, you won't have to cut on Shabbos. And then the greatest part, turn off the phone. We, Orthodox Jews and those who observe Shabbos, are probably some of the only people, aside from the Amish, who turn off our phones, who actually don't have a phone for part of our week. And this is so important during the COVID crisis because who needs all that bad news? All about, about the, the crisis, how many people are dying, how many people are sick. We'd rather not know. On one day a week, it's good to clear our minds of all this and we can focus. We don't have to check how many likes we have on Facebook, on YouTube. We can just, just relax. So we turn off the phone, we put it away. You can even text some of your closest friends and relatives. I'm going into a 24-hour blackout period. I'll speak to you Saturday night, 42 minutes after the stars come out. Now, we do need to know the times, what time 18 minutes before sundown, so we can light the candles. What time is sundown? We can stop before sundown. And what time is sundown the next day, usually about a minute later. And then 42 minutes after that, it's the official time for after Shabbos. You want to be more lenient, maybe you can go to half an hour. We try to do at least 42 minutes after Shabbos to, especially as we get toward the summer, 42 minutes. Now, if we're not going to have a phone, then we need to have reading material. If you're a big newspaper person, that's okay. If you have books you want to read, get, so get some. Make sure you have some. Also, you want to print out different, different, different Torah about, about the Parsha, the holidays, Chabad.org, H.com. Uh, we have some things on Asby.org and uh, the OU. So many different sites. The Yeshivat Haaretzion, my Yeshiva in Israel. Wonderful uh, reading materials you can get about the particular Parsha this coming Shabbos, Parsha and more. The uh, when what, what, then you want to uh, prepare those candles. Make sure you have the two loaves for Friday night. You only have to eat one. And then another loaf you eat on Shabbos morning, but something you can, can serve as a second loaf. Both the Friday night meal and the Shabbos morning meal should have two loaves covered with some sort of covering, a challah cover or just any sort of cover, something on the bottom as well. It's reminds us of the manna from heaven. They were wrapped in their water, in the dew. So, uh, so we want to have at least three, uh, uh, two, uh, three loaves so that you can have two at night and then two during the day as well. Shalashud is it's nice to have two as well. So if you had six in total, five, that would be great. But the third meal is less significant as far as the double loaves go. Now, <clears throat> want to have at least two candles to light Friday night? Some people light according to the number of people in their family. Either custom is acceptable. It's good to light the candles on the table or at least close to it or somewhere that's significant. Make the blessings over the candles, 18 minutes or at least before sundown. And then you can, you can set up an area in your house where you can pray. Let's try to make one area where each week, every day, whenever you pray, you can pray in that particular place so it begins to be more meaningful for you. Make sure it's free from distractions, mirrors, and other things like that. It's nice to pray up against a wall as well, or if there are holy books that you can pray near them as well. After praying the Mari of the evening service, the Kabbalat Shabbat, the Mari of service, then it's time for Kiddush. We have the Shalom Aleichem, 
Eish is Chayel, Proverb 31. Then, maybe bless the children, if you have children. And the Kiddush, you hold the cup, some hold it like this with the, on the bottom of the cup, hold it like this, and drink after the Kiddush. And then we wash our hands, twice on the right hand, twice on the left hand. Make hamoti, make the blessing over the bread. Well, the bread is, we uncover the bread, we hold the two loaves. Cut night, you cut the bottom loaf. The morning, you cut the top loaf, and you consume uh, some challah. Try to have a nice meal. Some like to have more food, less food, but whatever is appropriate for you and your family and your, your stomach and your, your needs. Then you could try to sing some songs. The cantor has prepared some on asbi.org. We have different zemirot, different songs. YouTube, there are many songs, zemirot, you can find. And in the bencher, there are different songs. You can also read them as poems. It doesn't have to be read as a song. Then if, you, if you're by yourself or you're with others, you can share some of those divrei Torah that you print out from Shabbos. Or you can just enjoy the day, use the time for meditation, thinking, thinking about different things, and reading as well. The, uh, on Shabbos morning, we try to wake up before, uh, say, at least the Shema, before about 9.30, before the time when uh, about three hours into the day, into the, uh, s- since sunrise, so that you don't say the Shema too late. But you can wake up a little bit late on Shabbos morning to enjoy some sleep. Sleep is a very important part of Shabbos. On Shabbos morning, try to at least say the Shachrit and then the, uh, the Musaf, and try to read the Torah as well. Go through the whole reading, English, Hebrew, whatever language, and look at the Haftorah. See what's the Haftorah that week, the, the selected reading from the, from the prophets, also always very interesting. Then try to read up more on it. Different commentaries, the art school commentary, always good. Then you have your second meal. You could uh, have your second meal. Uh, you could have some kiddush if you get tired of all the prayers in the morning. You have your kiddush and then continue with the Torah reading and the musaf. Then have lunch. Lunch to consist again, make kiddush, different kiddush. You look in your sitter for different kiddush for Shabbos morning. Basically just boy prayer gaffin and some, some verses. And then again, two loaves, you cover them, take them, you take them out, take, you make a mozi, you eat the, something from the upper loaf, and you continue a nice meal, songs, mirot, more about the parsha, more enjoyment, more meditation, more thinking for lunch. In the afternoon, you can sleep, you can walk, you can reflect, you can meditate, you can just think. And um, we, uh, and then mincha time in the afternoon, Try to say the mincha before sundown. Again, there's a little Torah reading that goes with that as well. The next week's Torah portion, the first section. So you actually see the third meal. If you're, if you're not hungry, you can just have a piece of fruit, a piece of cake. Or if you're ready to, you have two loaves of bread. At least one loaf, one piece of bread. But if you have two loaves, you have two little, little loaves or a big loaf, two pieces of matzah, one piece of matzah, one piece of challah, or one, piece of, one roll of challah. You can have two, that's even better. And uh, you partake in that. You can sing the 23rd Psalm. You can uh, think more about the Parsha. And then get ready for Mariv, evening service, Havdalah. Try to have the spices. You have to have the two candles. If you have a special Havdalah candle, great. Otherwise, to put two candles together. Serves the Havdalah candle. Even one candle is okay, too, if you, if you don't have a Havdalah candle. And then Shabbos is over. We have a group Havdalah. We have group uh, meetings before Shabbos. Kabbalat Shabbat. That's Shabbat. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to, to turn off the phone. It's an opportunity to be with our families. It's an opportunity to be with ourselves, to get comfortable with ourselves, to rest, to sleep a little bit extra, to eat a little bit extra, to pamper ourselves. If you're a newspaper person, to read more of the newspaper magazine. If you're a book person, to read more. If you're a person who likes to take walks, just likes to sit by themselves and reflect and think, all these things are possible, can be done. It's Shabbos, it's a gift. Shabbat Hilachem. The Shabbos is not an imposition. It's for us. Someone once said, more than the Sabbath has been kept by the Jews, Sabbath has kept the Jews. It keeps us. It keeps us grounded. It reminds us who we are. It gives us a time to reflect, a time to just be ourselves, not be forced to all these other social contrasts, constructs, all these different social interactions that, uh, that were forced upon us. And during these COVID times, it's a tragic time. It's also a time of opportunity to make it time for ourselves to just enjoy Shabbos. It's not all or nothing. Observe one Shabbos. It's a great thing. If you do two Shabbos, if all the Jews would observe two Shabbos together, 
Maybe Mashiach would come. It's a great thing. It's a great opportunity for each one of us. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for listening, hearing us out. And join us each week for discussion of the Parsha, holidays, and how-to, more how-to videos as well. Thank you so much.